Hey everyone, Brandon Bonifer. I'm back with another video. Over the last few weeks, I've had an opportunity to talk to a lot of you, and many of you guys have told me that, wow, this has really changed the beginning of your year. Yes, many of you guys have come from paper planning, and a lot of you have told me that you guys have been Franklin Covey users for a long, long time, and for the last couple years, you guys have been looking at getting into digital planning, but just have not found a planner that's working for you. So to hear that so many of you guys are finding that the Key to Success planning system that we put together is one that's gonna make a difference in your world, I'm really, really excited to hear that. For those of you that are still using planning, like the Franklin Covey Planner. Today I'm going to talk to you about what it is to get started, how to get started, and how to enter the digital planning world. I'm going to showcase our planner a little bit, showing you some of the features, but if you guys really want to dive into our planner, we've got a lot of different videos that really dives into the planning system and how it works. But today I'm going to give you guys the principles on how you get started with digital planning. So stay with me. All right, so if you guys are ready to move from paper planning to digital planning, I'm gonna to try to break down the how-tos in three simple steps. There's three simple steps in my mind that help you kind of move forward. The first one is choosing a device. The second one is choosing an app. And the last one is choosing a planner. Now, yes, it does seem pretty simple when you break it down to those three different things, but there's a lot of things that you need to consider when you look at each one. So the first thing, choosing a device. Now for a lot of people, this is the most expensive part. So I try to always ask people, well, what devices do you currently have? Do you have an Apple iPad? Do you have a Microsoft Surface? Do you have a Samsung Tab? Or do you have some other device? And through that, I'm able to help them to determine what type of planner works best for them. If you guys hit the link in the description above, it'll take you to our website and it'll show you the various devices, the various apps, and the planners that are best suited for those devices on those apps. So hopefully that's a key. But I'll tell you this, when you look at the actual device itself, I want you to think about what is your primary goal. And when we designed planners, the biggest reason why we designed a planner is because we found that there was a huge gap in the ability to do good handwriting. There wasn't a good handwrite planner out there that you could simply handwrite notes. And if you're a Franklin Covey user or you have a, a paper planner that you use, one of the biggest things that kind of draws you to that paper planner is the ability to handwrite notes. So in my mind, there's only a handful of devices that have really come a long way with being able to recognize handwritten notes, and that's the Apple iPad with the pencil. If you're able to get the iPad Pro or even the new iPad Mini 5 that just came out, they can utilize the first or second generation pencil, which really is an amazing experience. And you'll see that through a number of our videos that you can really tell that this product was designed for handwriting. One of the first uh, programs uh, that really came out that was on the Microsoft Surface is a program called OneNote. And we'll talk about that just in a minute. But the Microsoft Surface has been out for a number of years and that application with that stylus is pretty impressive. It was actually one of the first real devices that I felt that could really replace the paper planner and really help me drive into building this planning system. Now there is definitely other devices that work, but I haven't had a personal opportunity to try them all. But I'll tell you this, jump on our social media page, go to our community section, check out our group, and ask the question. Ask the group, hey, what devices do you have, or this is the device that I have, and allow others to contribute that conversation. We're all here working together to try to make digital planning happen. The second thing is choosing an app. Now there's a lot of different apps out there. The primary ones that I hear most commonly are OneNote, GoodNotes, NoteShelf, Nobility, and Zudo Notes. Now these apps all work differently, but I'm gonna tell you there's really one clear definition between one of them and all of them. And that really is OneNote versus all of them as a PDF notation app. Now, what they do is simply the same thing. They allow you to dictate notes, but they do it quite differently. Now, OneNote is really a universal app that works on all devices. If you're on an Apple, Windows, or Android platform, it's gonna work on all of those as long as you're able to install OneNote and link it to your OneNote or Microsoft OneDrive account. That in itself is pretty awesome. There is a couple challenges with the installation. It's not as easy, and if you don't have a desktop, it's even more challenging, but 
Everyone here at Ketis Test Planning System does have an alternative solution, and we are definitely dedicated to helping you get that installed. So if you want to try out OneNote, we will definitely help you walk through that process, and we have a video that even helps you if you want to try on your own. The other apps are really PDF notation apps. Now, looking at all of them, GoodNotes is the one that I prefer, and I prefer it for a lot of reasons, and we definitely support all of the notation apps, but GoodNote is the one that I personally use, and I find that it's just a good, solid app. Even though it has some struggles like all apps do through their upgrading process, it's one that I recommend using. Now, I will tell you there is a big difference in the applications between GoodNotes and OneNote, and GoodNotes and all the PDF notation apps, and I will tell you personally, I do use GoodNotes as my primary app for my planner, but I use OneNote for all my other note taking. And I'm gonna do a video on that shortly and tell you why. And then the last step, choosing a planner. Well, first off, I tell you I'm a little biased in the Kita Sets planning system. I've tried a lot of planners that are out there over the last couple years and it led me to develop my own. And maybe that is the solution for you, is over time you might just develop your own as well. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. But there's a lot of different planners out there and you can go out to Etsy and you can check out tons of different planners there. You can just Google digital planners and I'm sure there's a handful. But when we designed our planner, we wanted a planner that was really designed for the professional individual that had work balance and just a career community life routine. And I wanted it to be something that I could use to help achieve my goals, but yet dial into the focus that I need every single day by checking off the boxes of the different plans and activities I have in front of me, but really giving me the motivation to move forward through my year, through my quarter, and through the week by really identifying the things that matter most to me. So guys, if you're looking to get away from paper planning and go digital, this is the year to do it. Get the device, find the right app, and go ahead and search for a planner that is going to fit your needs. If you guys choose to follow us on our journey, that would be awesome. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button. If this video has brought you any insight and comfort on digital planning, by all means, hit that like button. And guys, we will be committed to giving you guys more information throughout the year on digital planning. I'm Brandon Bonifer, author and creator of the Key to Success Planning System, and I wish you guys the best.